So hi, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dylan Patel. I'm a representative of Lotus Investments and Education and the Charitable Investment Club. And today we have Mr. Brian Simpson. He's a teacher at my high school. And without further ado, let's get started. So Mr. Simpson, our first question is, tell us about yourself. Well, um, I love teaching, that's for sure. Uh, and uh, I, I run a sports camp business uh, called Triumph Sports. Um, I also um, own real estate. I've owned real estate since 2002. I'm married. I've got four kids. Um, I am, uh, I, my kids all play sports, busy, crazy, um, but it's great. I have, a, I have a wonderful life. Great. So our second question is, why did you des decide to start teaching and more specifically, why the class you teach securities and investments? Yeah, so um, I actually worked for a company called Skyhawks for 10 years. And I decided in 2004 that I was going to leave them and launch my own sports camp business. Um, but I wasn't one of those people who could just jump off the cliff and start a business. I, I wanted to have a backup. And I'd always thought, well, maybe I could teach. Um, I don't know. Uh, and so I did. I uh, started, I got my certification in 2004, started teaching in 2005. And um, as a small business owner, it's kind of frustrating because I love teaching. Like, uh, and it's hard because um, like, if I didn't love teaching, I probably would have built my business a lot bigger and crazier and all that stuff. Um, but I love it. I love teaching. And so what I did was I, my first year, I was a football coach. I was a baseball coach. I did the yearbook. I did um, uh, the video class. I just did all sorts of stuff. And then, and then the next year, I, I kind of like narrowed it down to just doing debate and doing soccer. Uh, and then after that, I really realized that debate was my favorite class to teach. And for the next eight years, um, I coached debate both at Ferris and Byron Nelson High School and then left teaching in 2014 because our business was just blowing up and there was just too much going on. I left teaching and grew the business, but I really missed teaching the whole time. And I wanted to go back and be a debate coach. My wife was like, not a chance because uh, when you're a debate coach, you're debating in Harvard and Princeton and you're traveling around where we were traveling 32 weekends a year. It's not going to happen. So she's like, you need to go teach something else. And I have a business degree. So I thought, well, maybe I'll just teach business, see if I like that. And I loved it. It was amazing. Uh, I had some awesome kids. And so um, they didn't have a securities investments class. My first year I taught incubator uh, and taught like sports marketing. And then my second year, they offered me security. I remember looking at the list of classes that I could potentially teach. And I thought, this would be a great class to teach. Um, and so I said, I would like to teach that. So last year I taught sports marketing and securities and investments, and I had all my classes were completely full. And so I went to them and said, is it possible for me just to teach securities and investments? And that's it. And they're like, sure. So um, it, they said, as long as you can get 150 kids and I have almost 180. So it was like, I had enough uh, to be able to teach one thing, which is great because then you really get to do it. You really get to teach yeah what you want to teach. You don't have to be like just keeping your head above water as a teacher. Um, but um, I also just love it because I think every student in their lifetime is going to interact with finances in some way or another. And so I think it's a really vital class to take. For sure. So if you guys don't know, securities and investments is a great class. I'm already in it. It's very vigorous, not vigorous. It's very intensive. We get to learn all types of concepts that we're going to need within our adulthood and in the future. So our next question is, what do you do outside of teaching that provides you with more financial security or independence? Yeah, so uh, our sports camp business, I mean, by the time I left teaching in 2014, I had about 20, 2,200 campers at my camps. By the time we were hit 2019, we were at almost 9,000. Um, we were, we went from 45 employees to 300 employees. Um, and so all along the way, I was using all of that income to pay off my rental properties and to pay off my own primary house. Um, and so fortunately, we paid off all three of our rental properties uh, and almost had our house paid off and then COVID hit. <laughs> so it was like, oh my goodness, like we would have had our house paid off in 2020, um, but it, it took us a little bit longer just because of, of COVID. Um, but um, the rental income is amazing. Yeah, we have three rentals and all of them do about 1900 a month in gross revenue. Um, and we still run our sports camp business. And we still have about, you know, 17, 1800 campers that go to camp every year, which is enough for me to be able to be a teacher and be able to do it and make it worth my time. We've also streamlined our camps to where we aren't doing everything for everybody. We have streamlined it to our best customers and 
they're profitable and they're easy to work with and they like our program. So it's not real taxing outside of school. It still is work. Like I won't lie to you. Like some days I, I see teachers post like going to the pool or going to the lake. And there I am, you know, getting my marketing campaigns together and stuff. And it's like, Oh, but you know, you, you do that because um, I mean, I did, I worked at home for years and I was so bored. I just missed it. I missed the daily uh, teaching. I missed the seeing students daily. Um, and so my wife and I also, um, my wife has a 401k within her business. She, or she works for Sabre. So she, she invests there. I also have a 403b within teaching. Um, I invest, I love Robinhood, the app. I know I'm, I'm probably way too old for Robinhood, but I love the way it's set up and I love that I can trade crypto and securities on it. Uh, and so we do a lot of different things. Um, we really have tried to pride ourselves on never having debt or trying to get rid of debt, um, and being like as, as, um, I don't know, financially viable to be able to do what we want to be able to do every day. Yep. So you kind of alluded to this in the last question, but can you do what you love while still being financially independent? Or in other words, does the size of your paycheck determine how independent you will be? It depends on what you do. Like if you are a person that goes and gets yourself in massive debt, whether that be credit cards, student loans, auto debt, too big of a house, whatever it is, you will be a slave to the job you may hate. I mean, I couldn't imagine having a really great car, but having a job that I hated. I get to drive that car for what, an hour a day? And I got to work at that job for eight hours a day. Like that's just miserable. So to me, like we forego a lot of our personal luxuries in order to have freedom of occupation. So to me, like last night, I'm watching, you know, HBO and I'm like thinking to myself, I get to teach tomorrow. I'm not dreading it. I love teaching. Like some people on Sunday nights are watching 60 Minutes and HBO and they're just like, oh, I'm so, I don't want to go to work tomorrow. That is not my life. My life is, I'm excited. I actually was doing work last night. I was sitting there like, you know, watching the Cowboy game too and like getting, answering some emails. And I like interacting with students. I like teaching this kind of stuff. I feel like this is a class that in 10 years from now, they're going to come back. I'm going to have kids come back and say, I stayed out of debt. I bought my first rental property. Um, I'm now looking to buy my second rental property. And, uh, you know, they're going to get ahead financially as opposed to my situation at college, which was I got into student loan debt. I got a credit card. I maxed it out. I like just did all the stupid stuff. I leased a car right out of college. I just didn't know what I was doing. Like nobody gave me a roadmap. My college made me a consumer. It made me a middle manager. It didn't make me an entrepreneur and someone to be financially independent. So I think if you are going to be toiling on this earth and doing something you hate, I feel sincerely sorry for you. You should do something every day that you love because then you never really have to work. Yep. And this kind of off topic, but I would love if you could elaborate on your job acronym. I think the JLB acronym is really funny. Yeah. And, and I don't want to steal it because it's from Millionaire Next Door or one of those books, but J-O-B um, to a lot of people stands for just over broke because that is their only source of income and they are maxed to the hilt with, uh, with high mortgages and leased cars and credit cards and golf club memberships and whatever it is. And the moment that their boss walks into their office and says, we really appreciate all the work you've done for us. Unfortunately, we no longer need your services that just over broke. You have lost your only source of income. You know, in 2020, a pandemic hit and a lot of people lost their jobs. And that's, that was really, it was unforeseen. No one could have ever foreseen that. But my wife and I had prepared for years for some kind of rainy day. We didn't know what it was going to be, but some kind of rainy day. And so when we couldn't run a sports camp, we didn't make any money at all that summer running sports camps. I wasn't teaching then. My wife wasn't working for Sabre then. So the only income we had was uh, our real estate. And thankfully our tenants paid every month and it was great. Like um, we were able to sustain because multiple streams of income allow you to be financially independent. If you are J-O-B, you are just over broke. If that's what you're only relying on. The day Ms. Springer walks through the door and says, Mr. Simpson, we've appreciated your services, but we no longer need you here. I will walk out of here and say, man, that's too bad. I really like this job, but okay. Uh, it's not going to kill me financially. It's just we. I can. I can probably go find another teaching job. First of all, but secondly, if I tried, if I if I decide tomorrow, man, I just want to go play pickleball every day. I can do that. So why is it important for students or at least people our age to get ahead on financial security and understand how to be independent? What can they do to start? 
Well, um, first of all, you've got to understand how money works. Money can, you can either work hard for money or money can work hard for you. You either are on the right side of compounding interest or you are on the wrong side of compounding interest. So to me, in my opinion, and I don't speak for all teachers and all educators, but I'm going to really counsel my kids not to get into student loan debt. Like I know that you're, the bank may say, well, that's good debt or whatever, but we are going to really be careful about what kind of college we finance for our kids because we don't want to put them in such a debt position that when they graduate, when they're 22 and they have their degree and they're ready to join the workforce, we want to help them get their first house and we want them to be financially viable. So to me, we are going to say, we, by the way, yesterday, my kids, uh, they worked in the yard and instead of, uh, I told them I have, I have, um, 401 dad is what I am. Right. So like if they go work for me, I can, I will pay you $20 cash or I will match your $20 and put it into your stocks, whatever stocks you want to pick and I'll make it $40. So it's a four, like a 401k, like your company matches what you're going to put in there, but yeah. you can't touch it till you're 16 when you go to buy a car. So they have to learn about some delayed gratification too. Yeah. So for me, like I'm trying to counsel my kids to understand, yeah, 20 bucks is great now, but it's going to buy some, some dumb thing that you are probably going to forget about in six hours. Whereas you could buy yourself financial independence if you put it into um, Ethereum, or you put it into Amazon, or you put it into Disney. Uh, Harper wanted to buy Lululemon because she loves the shorts. So she wanted a pair of those and she wanted to buy stock in it because she believes that company is really good because she knows how many people are wearing it. Henry wanted uh, $20 in Disney. No, no, $20 in Apple and $20 in Amazon. And so for me, I think if kids can, if parents can help, um, with their kids, like helping them set up some kind of account, some kind of way to be able to put money away. Even if you're like, man, Mr. Simpson, I know nothing about investing. No problem. Just go get the S&P 500. Just go get SPY. It's an ETF that hits all 500 stocks. That is like better than anything, uh, in my opinion. I also think that if you don't have skin in the game, it's like, it's like when I play fantasy football, I'm all of a sudden vested in that fifth receiver on a Monday night football game, right? I, otherwise, I wouldn't care about that Monday night football game. When I have money in Dogecoin or I have money, you know, in anything, I'm looking at it pretty consistently because I have skin in the game. And I'm not telling people to go buy crypto or I'm not telling them to go buy. I'm just telling them that like once you put your money in the market, you are now in. You are now starting to care about what's happening. And let's say, for instance, you put $100 in Amazon and it goes down to $1. You've lost a hundred and man, that's a shame, you know, but you've learned a lot. You've opened up an account you've got there and Amazon's going to come back. Like we, I mean, I, like, I, I don't like to shop. Amazon is my ultimate solution for my biggest problem, which is, can you go to, you know, this store or that store and get that thing? I don't like going to the store. So, and it comes right to my door steps. So like I tell kids, I, I try to counsel parents. And by the way, my kids are invested. My kids have three different platforms that they invest into because I want to keep them all separate. So my daughter does Weeble and Henry does SoFi and Charlie does another one, but those allow them to have crypto and securities. And it also keeps their accounts separate. So I don't not like how much money do you have and how much money do you have? And it just, it's, it's easy for us, but you got to get in the market. In my opinion, you've got to get in the market in some degree. So our last question is what is the charitable investments club to you and how have you aided in their efforts? Oh man, well, Common last year, um, you know, and all those guys, Prabhav, all those guys, like when they were first telling me about it, like it was two years ago when they were all juniors and they were like, here's what we want to do. We want to invest money, uh, take the returns and go buy peanut butter for the food pantry. And I remember being like in tears, like I remember just being like, oh my gosh, like so much of this world is so self-consumptive. Like, what is it about me? I want to go make this money so I can go buy this item that I want or whatever, but we want to create this investment club to teach people about investing. So they understand how to get into the market. And then we're not even going to profit off of the very profits that we're smart enough to make. We're going to go, you know, we're going to go help other people. And I just, I think that's really great. Like, so I have an experience. I worked in, I worked for the chargers in college and I wrote a lot of public um, you know, press releases for, for the chargers to try to get newspapers to write articles about our players and so I just counseled them a lot on like, hey, here's how you, you need to get publicity. No, you don't want to be like, look how great I am. But you, you need to be in a place where you can say, this is what we're doing. And it might inspire a kid at Plano Senior High School or a kid at South Lake Carroll or a kid at McKinney Boyd to say, 
man, look what this Coven guy, look at this Prabhup guy are doing at Coppell High School. We could do that here. Like we, we invest, like we could counsel other people. And, you know, a lot of times we're always like, it's just someone else needs to solve the world's problems. No, like you can solve, like you can, you, there's a, it, I mean, and what a great time to have help, help out a food pantry, like during a, a pandemic when people are out of work and they need money and, and they need like peanut butter is a sustainable protein that you can't, you know, that never goes bad. Right. So it's like when they stacked up those, those things, I mean, like, I was telling my friends about it. Like I was at like a baseball game and I'm like, you wouldn't believe these students that I have, what they're doing. Like, look at, look at these returns, first of all. And then secondly, look at what they're buying with the returns. I said, that is like, newspapers are dying for stories like that. Uh, yeah. And so you need to get them out there and get it. And so they got in Dallas Morning News. They called me and interviewed me. And I was like, look, I am like, <laughs> I, I am the guy who's just like, I, you know, I've done very little. They are doing incredible stuff. But I just love the heart of service. Like, so I think a lot of people, you know, like when I give my kids gifts for Christmas, like if they give me gifts, I'm like, oh, thank you, whatever. But I just love to see their face and getting that gift. And I think sometimes when we do service for other people, it actually benefits us more, <laughs> which is, which some people might think is a little bit selfish. You're like, no, like I'm, I'm actually trying to do something for someone else and I can see how much it impacts them. And that to me is like, so noble like i just think it's so it's so charitable and it's such good heart and it's like the story we need people to you know i remember seeing the kids from uh plano west who had built their big um ethereum mining thing in their garage awesome what a cool story but it was just it was just benefiting them which no no offense to that there's, no, there's nothing wrong with that but like here are kids that are you know sort of mining in their own way and then donating the profits i just I think that makes for, I, I'm surprised that CNN didn't pick it up, you know, yeah. to be honest. So, yeah, it's a, it's a really cool concept. And when I heard about it, I was generally surprised too, that people were such like selfless, you know, it was really, yeah. right. Yep. So I want to thank you for being on this first interview. We had some technical difficulties, but we got through it and yeah. I hope to see you soon in our next interview. And we really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thank you.